Hello students, welcome to our channel. In this video, I am going to discuss about quantum numbers. So it is very important topic in the chapter states of matter for class 11 chemistry. Okay. And in our channel, we are providing handwritten notes for every topic which we have explained. So if any one of you need to download handwritten notes for this topic, you just go and check out the description or else comment section where I have given link to download PDF for this topic notes. So now let's move on to the topic. Quantum numbers. They are the set of numbers which are used to describe the position and energy of an electron. Okay. They are used to describe the position and energy of an electron inside the atom. Which simply means that the quantum numbers will tell you the address of an electron inside the atom. Every electron has a unique set of four quantum numbers based on the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay, and the four quantum numbers are principal quantum number, angular momentum quantum number, magnetic quantum number, and electron spin or spin quantum number. Let's go with the first quantum number that is principal quantum number. So, this principal quantum number can be denoted by a symbol small n. Okay, so here n is principal quantum number and n is an integer. Okay, n is an integer 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. And do you know what would be the purpose of this principal quantum number? The principal quantum number describes energy level of an electron inside an atom. Okay, it describes the energy level of an electron inside an atom. So now looking at the picture, so here we have basically a Bohr's model of an atom, right? So this is the Bohr's model of an atom and we can see that the first shell represents the first energy level and the second circle is the second energy level where n is 2, right? And the third circle is the third energy level and where n is 3. So here n is what? n is principal quantum number, right? So, this is how basically the principal quantum number describes the energy level of an electron inside the atom. Okay. Now, let's go for the second quantum number that is angular momentum quantum number. This number indicated by the symbol L and it describes the shape of sublevel within an energy level. Okay. This angular momentum quantum number can describe the shape of sublevel within the energy level. Okay, got it? Now we have four different sublevels that you are going to see on a regular basis. So the first one is S sublevel, which is basically spherical in shape. And the second one is P sublevel, and then we have D sublevel and the F sublevel. Now what you need to know is that for the S sublevel, L is always 0. And for P sublevel, L is always 1. And for D sublevel, the angular momentum quantum number that is L is always 2. And for the F sublevel, L is always 3. Now let's talk about the relationship between N and L. So L is less than or equal to N minus 1. And here L and N both are integers. Okay, L and N are both are integers. Let's talk about what this means. So when N is 1, that is principal quantum number is 1, then L can have only one value. That is L equals to 0. Okay, N minus 1 or 1 minus 1, it becomes 0. Okay, L is equals to 0 here. Now, when N is 2, when N is 2, according to this equation here, L has to be less than or equal to n minus 1 or 2 minus 1 which is 1. So that means L could be 0 or 1 and this expression will be true. Now what about when n is 3? When n is 3, the maximum that it can be is 3 minus 1 or 2. So that L can be 0, 1, 2. And when n is 4? L can be 0, 1, 2, 3. Now let's see what all these numbers actually means. So remember when L is 0, what sublevel do we have? When L is 0, this corresponds to 
S sublevel. Now, when n is 2, L could be 0 or 1, which means that we can have S or P sublevel. And when n is 3, L could be 2, so we can have S, P or D sublevel. And when n is 4, we can have S, P, D or F sublevels. Now notice that there is no 1P sublevel. There is no 1P sublevel. This does not exist. The first energy level does not exist as a P sublevel. And let's say if you are writing electronic configuration for an element, you will know that there is no 2D sublevel. You have 2S and 2P, but not 2D sublevel. And in the third level, you could have 3S, 3P, and 3D, but not 3F. So 3F is not possible. And in the fourth level, you could have 4F. That is possible. Okay, got it? Now here's a question for you. So let's say we have an electron in the 3D sublevel. Based on this information, what is N value? What is N value and what is L value? That corresponds to an electron in the 3D sublevel. Look at here. So basically, n is the number that you can see here. That is, n is 3, right? So now, for d sublevel, what will be the l value? So if you recall for the s sublevel, l is always 0. For the p sublevel, l is 1. For the d sublevel, l is 2. And for f sublevel, l is always 3. So now coming to this question, for 3D sublevel, n is 3 and l is going to be 2. Okay, got it? So let me give you another example. What if we have an electron in the 4F sublevel? What will be the n value and what will be the l value? So as we can see, n is the number in front of f. So n is going to be 4. n is 4. And f is always corresponds to an L value of 3. Now let's move on to the third quantum number, which is magnetic quantum number represented by the symbol m sub l. And this number describes the orbital within the sublevel. An orbital is basically a region or space in which the probability of finding an electron is very high. As we know that, in an orbital, electron can have an upspin or downspin. Every orbital can hold a maximum of two electrons. And now, let's talk about the relationship between L and M sub L. So, as we said before, L is the angular momentum quantum number and ML is the magnetic quantum number. So, when L is zero, we have S sub level and ML can be only zero. When L is 1, we have P sublevel and P sublevel has 3 orbitals. The first one has ML value negative 1 and second one is 0 and the third one has ML value of 1. When L is 2, we have T sublevel and there is 5D orbitals, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. When L equals to 3, we have F sub level which has 7 orbitals, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 and 3. Okay, got it? So now what you need to know is this ML is in between negative L and L. So let's say if L is 4, that means ML will be an integer between negative 4 and 4. So it could be negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this expression shows the relationship between ML and L. Now, let's say if we have 1S sublevel and we know that S has only one orbital and for S, L will be 0 and ML will be which is also 0. And now, let's say we were focused on the 2P sublevel. P has 3 orbitals, right? So, now for 2P, we know that n is 2 and l is always 1, right? For p orbital, l is always 1. And because l is 1, ml could be negative 1, 0 or 1. 
as you can see ml values they corresponds to the specific orbitals within a sub level right now let's say we have 3d sub level so here we know that n is 3 right and l is 2 because for d sub level l is always 2 and we know that d orbital has 5 orbitals which means that it can hold maximum of 10 electrons because you can put 2 electrons per orbital okay so since l is 2 ml could be anywhere from negative 2 to 2 so each ml value corresponds to a specific orbital in the sub level okay got it lastly let's go over 4f where n is 4 you know that n is 4 and l is 3 so for f sub level it has 7 orbitals f sub level has 7 orbitals where ml can vary between negative 3 to positive 3 so i hope that this helps you to see the relationship between ml and l which gives you these numbers now the last quantum number that we need to talk is something known as electron spin quantum number and the symbol that corresponds to this quantum number is m sub s m s as we all know that in an orbital electron can have up spin or down spin right so this electron spin quantum number can describes the spin state of an electron okay spin state of an electron in an orbital okay now the electron spin could be one of two values negative one half or positive one half now recall that an electron in within an orbital can either going up or down so if it is going up then the spin is positive one half and if the arrow is going down then the spin is negative one half so that's the last quantum number that you need to be familiar with so now let's say if we have 3d8 electron what are the four quantum numbers that corresponds to this 3d8 electron what would you say so we know that here n has to be 3 so based on this number for the d sub level l is always 2 so now we know that d orbital has 5 orbitals and so the ml value will be range from negative 2 to 2 now we need to find the location of 8th electron and the location will tell us ml value and also ms value and ms will always be negative one half or positive one half okay so i'll explain you shortly let's start with the parallel spin facing upwards so this is the 3d1 3d2 3d3 3d4 3d5 3d6 3d7 3d8 so the 3d8 electron landed in this orbital where ml was zero and here we have a down arrow right so which means that electron spin is negative one half okay but what will be happen if we started the down arrow as opposed to arrows facing upward what will happen so that won't affect your ml value okay but it is affect your ms value and now let's see how it is so this is one two three four five six seven and eight so in this case the eighth electron is still in the same orbital right but this time it has an upward spin that is the difference over here right and it has an upward direction spin means it means it is a positive one half so this can vary okay so this can always be either positive one half or negative one half depending on how you draw it okay but these three numbers will be consistent n is 3 l is 2 m is 0 so this is all about the four quantum numbers and in our next video you can find another important eight mark question for class 11 chemistry and if you want to listen more concepts regarding chemistry do subscribe our channel and thank you for watching